except for that woman right there in the front. You're here to kill us, aren't you? Have you ever seen the show? Yeah. Oh, you're going to like it. You're, you're really going to like it. All right. Oh, she'll be out of here before we get to the first commercial. Look at the juggies. You know, these outfits remind me of my all-time favorite movie, A League of Their Own. Oh, that was great. Only... Only without that, that big, fat, horrible Rosie O'Donnell. Okay. Tonight we want to talk about phone sex. Anyone here ever pay for phone sex? Never. No? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we'd have any phone sex wow. aficionados in our audience. Good. I've met five women who do phone sex. Their combined weight was over 1,800 pounds. <laughs> You know, I don't have the imagination for phone sex. Even if the woman on the other end of the phone was decent looking, I wouldn't believe it. My penis is a pessimist. <laughs> Jimmy's sack is definitely half empty. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with these phone sex girls is they go way over the top describing themselves. I got blonde hair, blue eyes, 36, 24, 36. Like it was a toss up between modeling for Victoria's Secret or faking orgasms for crank addicts at four in the morning. <laughs> Just be honest, I could get into it. You know, just, just level with us. Listen, I got a little bit of an overbite and I'm missing a toe. That I could spank to. <laughs> yeah. And who can afford $3.95 a minute? I have nine TV shows I can't afford that. That's 240 bucks an hour. I wouldn't pay $4 a minute to talk to my dead grandfather. <laughs> On three-way with Jesus. <laughs> Listen, if there's one message we can get to the young people out there, it's don't waste money on phone sex. Save it up for hookers. I wish we were around when we were younger. What? Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Good sound advice, Jimmy, but you know, sex isn't just, uh, phone sex isn't just for the guys. What about the ladies? Yeah. yeah. If there happen to be any gals looking for a little hot talk, then they're going to want to take a gander at this. Hey, ladies, are you looking for a real man? <clears throat> are you tired of all those phony guys with their manners and washed underpants? Call 1-600-MAN-SHOW now and talk to a regular guy like us live. So, what are you wearing? Some sweats I found at the Y. Please tell me they have mustard stains on them. French is yellow, baby. French is yellow. I love love handles. Well, I got plenty to hang on to, honey cheeks. What are you eating? Cheetos. Puffed or fried? Puffed. Big time. Oh. Ooh. Ladies, why live in fantasy land? Let real pot-bellied men get you hot. You're a dirty boy, aren't you? Yeah. How dirty are you? I barely wipe. Ooh, we lie. Call 1-600-MAN-SHOW now. Your bald spot is my G-spot. For masturbation purposes only, Three ninety five a minute, toll charges may apply. Hey, a little 
something for the chicks there. Get them good and sexed up. Are you good and sexed up? <laughs> I thought so. All right. When we come back, we're going to get to know our Juggies. In the meantime, Juggies, break the ice a little, will you? Juggy dancer Paula Harrison is a former homecoming queen from Georgia, but she's not your typical shy Southern belle. I grew up in Atlanta. I went to a school of the performing arts, and I majored in singing and dance. After high school, Paula moved to Hollywood, where she got her first dancing job. The first job I ever had was dancing as a bear at a bar mitzvah. And fellas, if you want to dance with Paula, you better wear nice shoes. I like guys in nice shoes, you know? Still, there is one thing that turns Paula off. My ex-boyfriend had these leather pants that smelled so bad. That really turns me off on a guy, smelly leather pants. And when this fiery redhead isn't sniffing pants, she visits retirement homes, teaching abstinence to the elderly. The idea of old people fornicating makes me sad and sick. It's unsanitary and it spreads disease. And the last thing we need is them breeding and making more old people. Beauty, grace, and compassion for her elders makes Juggy Paula lovely inside and out. Great work, Paula. You're doing wonderful work. Yeah. Get that out of there. <laughs> but Paula's not the only one giving back to the community. No, I'm proud to say that Jimmy and I do our part too. We do? No, we don't. Not really. No, we play foosball and get drunk. Let me tell you something about myself. I believe that children are our future, and that's why Adam and I spend our weekends teaching kids our national pastime. That's right. Take a look at this. Me and Jimmy teaching little leaguers. All right, kids, I'm Coach Adam. That's Coach Jimmy over there. We're here today to turn you into baseball players. That's right. First off, we're in charge. You listen to us, you listen to only us. From now on, I'm your father, and Coach Adam is your mother. Consider your real parents dead. No, you, your parents aren't really dead. No. It's a figure. Oh, come on. I, I made Rice Krispie treats. All right, here's the deal. If you all pay attention and come to practice, you'll all get to play. Except for you, sweetheart. Here's a quarter. Call your mommy. Ever take you to ballet practice. No girls allowed. All right, first, we focus on the fundamentals. This is a cup. All right, boys, listen up. Let's go over the signs. First, the indicator. Indicator's the sign that comes before all other signs. No indicator, no sign. I go with the bill, that's the indicator. Belt button, arm steel, take on the chest, squeeze on the arm, suicide squeeze on the hips, and this means I came to rock. Let's go over it again. Butt, steel, take, squeeze, suicide squeeze, and I was born to rock. say this. It's the hardest part of being a manager. What Coach Jimmy's trying to say is you're all very, very bad players and we're going to have to cut each and every one of you. Thanks a lot. 
Thanks for coming. Sorry, Thanks. fellas. Hit the road. Hey! Bring on the midgets. File in, little fellas. One, give it a ride, give it a poke, choke up on that stick. Now, don't get cheated up there. What do you say now? How about a frozen rope? How about a Texas leaguer? How about a bingo? What about a bingo? 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 Step out and take a look. Oh, yeah. Look. Take a look. any day. Oh, 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 oh. Did I say children are our future? I meant midgets are our future. That's right. Much more coachable. In a minute, Carl Malone. Yes. Juggies, rub some pine tar on it, would you? The man show. So you want to get married, do you? One day you're gonna tie the knot no matter what I say. Well, if you decide to buy the cow, you want to make sure at least it's a good one. But how do you know? How do you make the choice? Well, you take a look at this. Eight out of ten marriages end in divorce. Hi, I'm Dick Van Patten for Consumer Reports, America's source of unbiased and independent testing and reporting for more than 60 years. And we are proud to announce our new service, Bride Evaluation. You know, I think she's a solid investment. Good earning potential, acceptable childbearing hips, firm breasts. I just want to be sure. Consumer Reports Bride Evaluation runs your potential spouse through a series of rigorous tests, <laughs> assesses her performance, and gives her a rating that you can understand. Yeah, you know, the sex is, um, yeah, it's not so great once in a while, but, uh, you know, that's why we're here, so, uh, <clears throat> we'll see. The experts at Consumer Reports dare to compare. Experts like football great Bruce Smith. Experts like housekeeping genius Mr. Clean. I'll make sure she knows how to handle a mop. And experts like adult film star Ron Jeremy. I'll also make sure she knows how to handle a mop. Once her skills have been assessed, we give your prospective spouse an easy to read rating. Rebecca only got one and a half stars. That sure isn't worth half of everything I own. Consumer reports, you're a lifesaver. Let us try your bride before you decide. Consumer reports, bride evaluation. Let me tell you something. If Dick Van Patten is selling, I am buying. Oh, yeah. And now some thoughts from the great Carl Malone. Carl Malone don't understand how come ladies got to be going on with other ladies of the same sex. Now, Carl Malone do like looking at them lesbians licking on each other like they're doing in naked movies. Carl Malone order up in his hotel room. Hello? Give Carl Malone two naked movies. But here's my whole thing. That ain't the real life. In a real life, like WNBA, most of these here lesbians looking like big old ugly men. And that's why they can't get no man to go out on no movie date with them. Because they're looking like men. Big, old, ugly. So Carl Malone say this here. Hotel movie time lesbians, that's good. All pretty and buttered up. But them husky old real world tube sock lesbian, well that's a damn thing. Like Bible say, 
If the good Lord wanted women to be lesbians, he'd have gave them wings. Until next time, this here's Carl Malone. <laughs>